Hello and welcome back to my channel where I share my oil painting process and give you all of my top tips that you can apply to your own art. Today I'll be painting a portrait of a lab puppy and talking about what makes painting labs unique. To start off this painting, I begin with a wash of paint all over the panel that's basically the same color as the dog's fur. Her name is Monkey, by the way, and her portrait was commissioned as a gift, which is probably my favorite type of commission to work on. Jumping into the painting, I start with an ochre-toned wash that serves as a mid-tone. Here, I want my underpainting to do as much work as I can for me, so after the wash is in, I can just go in with lights and darks, and very quickly the composition will take form. You'll notice that pretty early on, I decide to focus on Monkey's eyes, and after that, her nose, as I think these are the areas of the greatest interest. I want the eyes to catch and hold your attention, and the nose to be interesting, but slightly less attention-grabbing than her eyes. I have a pretty good sense of how I want to paint the eyes, and I want to get them in early to begin to ground the rest of the painting. So I decide to go ahead and dive in here. You'll notice it's really just deep brown and a select few highlights that make up her eyes. The highlights aren't pure white either. They're like an ochre gray around the whites of her eyes and a slightly more intense white in the highlight, um, probably a bit cooler too. And then I add eyelashes, which are the same ochre tan as the rest of her coat. Basically, though, it means that creating her eyes can be as simple as three or four brush strokes each. I really try not to overwork it, too, because I think there's something about the depth and glossiness of the paint that lends itself to painting eyes really beautifully. And I think the simpler those brush strokes can be, the more soulful the eyes look. So I try to keep it simple and elegant and I move on as soon as I think the eye is looking the way that I want. After the eyes are in, I go ahead and start looking a bit more at her muzzle and nose because it's another area of high contrast where I think there's a beautiful series of color changes and nuances that are worth holding the viewer's attention. The gray below her nose where the skin of her mouth is showing through her white fur and the bits of brown and cool gray on her nose where the light is hitting it. Um, I think those are really beautiful. Additionally, there's this beautiful transition at the very top of her nose um, where that black or brown of the nose falls into a gray as white fur begins to meet that boundary. These are all areas that I let myself really study before I put the brush down in order to honor these nuances as best as I can. With these areas blocked in though, it's time for me to take a step back and ask which areas of the painting look ready for more attention. So which areas look different than the photo or maybe just less refined or more distracting. I saw some work I could do on her face and some simple adjustments on her back. But the next biggest area I had to give attention to was her outstretched paw, as it's part of the story here, and there's a lot of anatomy that I need to capture accurately to make this portrait work. Just like drawing a hand or fingers, I try not to individually outline her individual toes too much. I still want to suggest the anatomy though, so this is kind of an interesting game of imagining all of the anatomy in my mind as I go ahead and draw everything in and notice where some of those details disappear in my reference and let those disappear in my painting as well. Typically, when you become too literal with spelling out the anatomy, it just doesn't quite feel lifelike. As a part of that, even though her paw is pretty much white, I'm trying to be really careful not to go too intense with it. For one, that would be really distracting, and two, it isn't actually perfectly white in the photo that I'm having to paint from here. So I find um, a kind of warm gray and some pink tones 
to go ahead and go over that white shape with and suddenly her paw is beginning to look pretty lifelike. Finally, I had to make a decision about the background. Originally, Monkey was partially on a dog bed or blanket and then partially on a hardwood floor. I made the decision pretty early to opt for the darker background though um, the blanket or dog bed was pretty light and she kind of blended right into it, but I knew that I wanted her to stand out in the painting. So I went ahead and blocked that brown in pretty early, but I wasn't really happy with how it was looking. So I experimented with some options in Photoshop and ultimately superimposed a rug on my reference photo that I thought would be about the same value as the wood floor, but just with a little bit more visual interest. And that is it for this beautiful little painting. If you liked this video or learned something cool, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. If you're interested in any of the supplies I used to make this painting, I've included links in the description. And if you'd like to commission a portrait like this one, I've included a link to that as well. Thank you for watching and happy painting.